All right. This character's strengths are going to be a little bit less obvious. Whew, that's a lot of text. If your attack hit, you may return a continuous boost from your discard pile to play without paying its cost and sustain it. We didn't, and we hadn't invented the keyword sustain yet, but that's what it's saying. Then when you would discard it from play, seal it instead. All right. So basically, if you hit, then as an after effect, you bounce a continuous boost from your discard into play. But then it, when it would be sealed, or when it would be discarded, it's sealed instead. So it goes away permanently. By the way, this character, uh, as we will discover, has no recursion whatsoever. When a card is sealed, it's gone for good. That is important. That means like this is an actual cost. Not that she pays the cost of the boost literally, but you know, she'll lose the cards if she recurs them. All right, that's pretty strong, right? Like after a few hit, you can return a continuous boost. So you, so like you can pull a plus two speed out of your discard pile. So you can get immediate value at the cost of potentially a long-term benefit. So this feels like a rushdown ability, right? Um, before you may return a continuous boost from your discard pile to play without paying its cost and seal it and uh, and sustain it when we discard it seal it. So same functional ability, but the after was an after that required you to hit. The before happens regardless of whether you hit. And since it's a before effect, that means you can pull something like power and have it apply to this strike and matter. So this lets you basically triple dip, right? You can play a boost once. Later, it's discarded. This before lets you pull it back, gain the benefit immediately, unless it's a speed boost, because by the time you hit the before timing, you're already past where you care about speed. And then that boost will stay in play until the end of the next strike. Uh, that's extremely good. That ability is, is amazing. Well, actually, I should say this. It's very good. It's, it's not extremely good unless she has boosts to make it work. Right? Like, if you just have the normal boosts, this is a good ability, but no better than a good ability. Um, so we're going to put that at, like, right about in the middle. Because that is a 3-gauge exceed, and it's not that much better than her, her front side ability. Yeah. It's pretty good, though. Alright, let's look at some of these. Comma tail. Before advance three, one and two, two, six. So it's a fast dive. It's a very fast dive. Hit draw a card. Only does two damage. Uh, this attack is nice. I mean, it's good, but the, the main value of this is it's guaranteed gauge, right? Like, she can open with this and she has a gauge. And it refunds itself in terms of letting her draw a card. But she's gonna loot, but she's gonna trade down massively on the strike. Comma chaser. Hit advancing number of spaces. Alright, this is cute. So, like, with her exceed ability, she can strike with something like a grasp or whatever then put this into play and then soar across the map to be wherever she wants to be which if she likes long ranges and this attack suggests that she does is quite valuable all right boost is good um attack is honestly kind of mediocre like it, it's great oh hold on hold on Answer. this is a range two to five attack isn't it huh interesting Okay, being that it hits that wide swath, it's it's very, very good. But, you know, it actually doesn't do much damage. It really should have been printed power 1, uh, because then you could do something about it with an EX attack. As it is, you just have to, you know, play a slow thing and hit back. But, you know. Uh, speaking of things that are printed power 1 for that exact reason. Uh, yes, Reggie, sorry, you did miss Alice. Sonic Comet, alright. All right, so this card is why this card is better than I just said it was. Three to six, one seven, hit gain advantage. Uh, three to six, one seven. Yeesh. Uh, this card follows the trend, by the way, of cards that are like really above curve, often have advantage on them because otherwise they will only be used on defense. So like you put an advantage effect on it so that the player goes, oh, I guess I want to play this on offense sometimes because it's a guaranteed hit. Um, Otherwise, they'll only be used on defense, which is what happens with, uh, you know, speed six range three cards like Tidal Whirl. All right. So this is extraordinary, and it creates a move, don't move mix up with Comet Tail, uh, which means Comet Tail is a little bit more reliable because people are likely to just play a block or something. And Sonic Comet is a little bit better because it means people might occasionally play a focus or a sweep and it ju and just miss. 
Uh, I'm talking specifically about opening positions, by the way, because these do feel like, this feels like an opener mix-up. Like, that feels like why it exists. Especially because this is, I gain a gauge, I gain advantage, right? Like, uh, Carl Swanji also loves to do this. He's a card that's shaped much like this, except his is a bit more balanced. This thing is speed 7, my gosh. Uh, it's the fastest of fast projectiles. It beats every other fast projectile because, uh, well, okay, initiating it beats every other fast projectile, right? There are some fast project, there are some other speed seven fast projectiles, but they're extremely rare. And one power is super important because, at one power, it does not stun EXs even if it is EXed, right? So EX Sonic Common is only two, which means that you still eat the EX dive if the opponent plays EX dive. Unfortunately, if you play Comet Tail. EX Dive whiffs, so people usually aren't going to risk playing EX Dive. Um, this is better than Comet Tail. Like, it's just, it's safer. Oh, uh, the boost. PPM Razor. 1 Force plus 3 speed. Alright, well, here we go. That is an extremely strong boost. Uh, we'll see how much you can make use of it, though. Like, speed is very, very useful because it lets you turn power into damage. But if she doesn't have very damaging attacks, then the speed is... Mostly good for normals, which is still good. Don't get me wrong. Um, so, like, she can play this and then she can recur it, but she won't gain the benefit of the before, right? Because, like, or rather, as a before effect, she can't use the speed during that strike. So it's not, so it's a double dip instead of a triple dip. Um, but that's really good, though. Being able to double dip on a speed boost is very, very strong. Um, both sides of this are awesome. Yikes. Both sides of this are really, really awesome. <laughs> All right. What next? Uh, let's just keep doing fast. Well, actually, I'm going to glance at the power numbers. Seven, three, three, four, three. All right. Seven on an ultra. Other than that, nothing obviously outlandish. Let's look at Technic Beat. One, two, three, six. So it's on curve. After close one. Uh, so it's actually less safe than you know, some on curves. If you moved, you may return this to your hand and at the bottom you discard to your gauge. Interesting. So if you're sitting at range 8 or whatever, you can play this and get gauge. Like, bounce this to hand, put the bottom you discard to gauge, and move one. That's quite good. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting little tool. How important is it to her? Well, we know how good her exceed mode is. We'll see how good the ultras are later. So, fairly nice. But she already has two other ways to get guaranteed gauge. Comet Tail and Technique are comparably unsafe, right? So this attack is definitely less important. Uh, also, Auto Tuner plus three power. All right, so here's here's the first boost that we can see makes a huge huge difference when it is triple dipped. Um, that is that makes this before plus three power for this and the next strike, right? Which is horrifying. Three is a huge huge breakpoint to exceed. Um, so I'm going to say this this kind of gets a little better because we see this boost existing. This attack by itself is not very important. It's kind of a safety valve or like a useful tool, but you're just not going to need it because you're going to be landing these things really, really easily. The boost, though, the boost is quite good. Honestly, it's probably better than Comet Tail. Like... These these both have the, the these attacks both have the role of you now have more gauge and you need gauge so good, um, but altogether both this attack and this boost are great. Whereas this just has a great attack and then a boost that's deceptively good. But like if you're not in exceed mode, it's super telegraphed. So like outside of an ex so if you just play this from hand, it's not that great, right? Because it's just a positioning tool that matters when you hit, so it doesn't help you hit the opponent first. So it's like, alright, if the opponent initiates into you and they hit you first, it doesn't help you hit them, it just lets you position for your next turn, which is nice. Like, it's not bad. But it's not plus three power. Plus three power is, uh, quite a boost. Alright. What do we got next? Um. Ooh. Okay. One, four, five, before close to. Alright, it's assault. Hit, push the opponent one space. If they move, you may return to your hand on the bottom, you just catch your gauge. Oh, that sounds kind of familiar, right? Like, almost the same effect, except this one actually requires you to hit them. Um, but that's it? It's an assault that can recur itself, but it doesn't gain advantage. 
The only benefit is that it returns to your hands. That's not very good. Uh, like, and it only pushes them one. If it pushed them two, at least it would still be on curve. But now it's under curve. Like, it pushes them one, and then you're, you're under curve. All right. Well, it's still on curve, so it's not, like, actually the worst. It's not a bad mid-speed. It's just an on curve option. That's not very good. Drop the mic. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Add once your hand. Discard the rest. That's a trap. Like, it, it is a consistency tool. And it does let you stock your discard pile with boosts. But it's obviously much better to just play the boost, then have it be discarded, and then pull it back. So you can use it more than once. Uh, this seems like a little cinder churning through a deck way too fast. I don't think that's a good boost. Uh, and yeah, the attack is really mediocre compared to this stuff. Alright, Starstruck. It's actually four greater don't hit you. So it's a ranged dodge. Uh, which means it is another, like, specific answer, but hang on a second. 3617 beats fast projectiles and some mid-speeds. Beats all projectiles. Why does she need this? This is a tool she doesn't need. Uh, hit range 1, push the opponent 3 spaces and plus 2 power. It's also a sweep like, right? At range one, this does six damage. Uh, no, 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 that, I can't do math. Five damage, all right. So it's worse than sweep. And for some reason, it's just a ranged dodge, I guess. Like you play it at range one and they get pushed and now they miss because they are out of range. But if for some reason they had range one to four, they still miss. Hmm. And five guard. This seems like it's doing a lot of things and it's doing all of them a little too well, right? This has six guard, even though it's speed three. This beats Sweep at range 1. Um, doesn't seem like it actually loses to anything, except maybe Cross? And Heaven help them if they cross out, right? Like, you options. This is a very good attack. It's a deceptively good attack because it's not, like, obviously amazing at any one thing, but it does everything really well. Uh, Scrub. Choose a number. Your opponent must discard a card that includes that range or reveal a hand with none. I mean, I guess if they have a particularly astoundingly good card, like an Ultra that has a range of exactly four or whatever that you're worried about, you can knock it out with this. But honestly, this attack is just super good. I feel like you're always going to use the attack. Hmm. Notably, this is not a continuous boost. Neither was this. So she is going to be leaning on probably these in her normals. Um, is this better or worse than Common Tail? It's better than Common Tail. It just does everything pretty well. Like, a card that is good at everything, but not amazing at anything, is still a good card. Because of how many situations where you can use it, as opposed to Common Tail, which, you know, doesn't work when you're at range 1. It just doesn't do anything. It's pointless. So, like, there's times that this is dead. This is never dead. That's a very good card. Alright, uh, but I do I do still think it's less valuable than this auto-tuner boost, because this auto-tuner boost is fantastic. Uh, okay, here we go. Alright, well, we're doing that one last. Meteor Jam. Alright. Two seven five. Uh, so it's below curve. Two gauge. Um, kind of expensive for below curve. And then hits, you put them discard a card at random, so it's knocked down, and then push them two. Okay, so, wait, what? Push two. Push two would normally be the, like, oh, you're at range two, you push two, you beat sweet. But it's dealing seven damage, it already beat sweet. So, that's just to provide extra spacing for her ranged move moves, I guess. You know. Um, 275? Eh. I mean, two gauge, and two gauge will buy you about 175 as far as stat lines go. So, 275 is not that far off. Notably, unlike 175, 275 can be EX'd and then it beats everything, uh, when you initiate at least. So that's good. It's good. It's relatively fair. Like, it's a little too good, maybe, but eh. It's not, it's not even egregious. As far as how much power it actually contributes, though, this... All right, so now we've seen a few more of these. Her exceedability is moving right to the top. Um, I also feel like, given how many fast options and how many reliable options we see that she has, on curve, above curve, you know, one to three with six guard, 
absurdly the above curve. This power boost actually gets more and more valuable the more per kit that we see. This is finally an undercurve option that isn't also insanely good at being defensive. So... Well, I want to fit it here, but hold on a moment. Electric Slide. Advance two spaces. Uh, in later seasons, this would be templated as a now effect. So now advance two. If you switch sides with the opponent, ignore guard. Otherwise, discard this from play. So what this would read is, ignore guard, now advance two. If you did not move past the opponent this way, discard this boost. That's like the current templating, the modern templating for that. All right. Um, interesting. So, here's what's extremely important about this, right? It is a continuous boost that says now advance two. Before, you may return a continuous boost from discard pile to play without paying its cost and do not discard it after the strike. So, before, advance two. And then if you happen to move past the opponent that way, this stays in play as an ignore guard boost that is then sustained. So you get to ignore guard two strikes in a row. Remember how fast this girl is? Being able to ignore guard is very, very strong and Getting extra, like getting the extra advance, means that she's essentially extending her range on things, right? You can play a range three. You can play grasp at range three. Bounces into play. Wait, no, sorry. Two. You can play grasp at range two. Jump past the opponent. Gain ignore guard. Hit them. Stun them. Sustain this. And then at next strike, you can still play. You know your other copy of grasp or something and ignore guard. Like. Yikes. Um. This boost, this attack is actually good, but pretty fair. This boost, not even slightly fair. Hmm. It also makes the speed boost even more valuable. Starstruck has to has to slide down a little bit here to make room. We're gonna just, yeah. We'll just do it like that. That's probably more important than the speed, honestly. Just being able to tack extra range on his stuff, because it means you can't even zone her if for some reason she managed to be out of her ranged options. Huh. Does that mean her weakness is melee? Right? Range 3, range 3, range 1, range yes, uh, range, you know, lots ideally. And then range 2. I'm getting mixed message about what her favorite range is, because this boost also lets her extend her melee attacks. But it does seem like her worst range right now is 1, except for Starstruck. Well, let's go change that. Juno Live. Alright. Setting aside my feelings about this card. Because I have very strong feelings about this card. 3 gauge, 139. 139? 139. 139. Was that power boost? I'm just gonna keep moving that up. Uh, ignore guard. Yep. Also gets better. One three nine. Sure. Um, hit. Place up to three cards face down. Your opponent names a card. Reveal the face down cards and discard them. If none of them is the named card, plus two power per card discarded this way. All right. So you play a kind of shell game. Sort of. Um, put, up to three, put up three cards from your hand, face down in play, and go, guess a card name. Uh, then if any of those cards is the name that your opponent guessed, you get nothing. Otherwise, plus two power per card discarded this way. So this can be one, five, nine, pretty trivially, right? Because you throw one card down and they have very poor odds of guessing it correctly, depending on when you play it. One, seven, nine. That's slightly better, or sli slightly worse odds. One nine nine if you're particularly greedy and or a bit lucky. Except, you know, if you're in exceed mode, it's more than that, because you're going to be able to tack plus three power into play on this. Or if you're at range two, ignore guard. Um, this might be the freest ultra in the game in terms of just always getting stupid amounts of value. Also, since it's speed nine, it wins on defense against EX Grasp. Uh, that's real dumb. Like, and if you're thinking, well, you know, if you don't get much value out of the ability, it can trade against focus or sweep. 
not really, because you can just put this boost into play, right? And then you just don't lose to things, because you're in exceed mode. Yeesh. Um, okay, mix break. After move up to one. Well, that's pretty insanely underwhelming compared to this attack. Wait, what? what? What's this boost doing on this attack? That's a good boost. Don't get me wrong. In fact, it's notably good because it interacts with the front side. But using your character ability on a card means you seal it. Why would you ever seal this attack? This attack is completely insane. I guess you can seal one copy, but like you need to have a copy left over. Whew. Um, so I think we found her other source of damage, too, because this attack will always convert power boost into damage. Like, with extraordinary liability. I'm just gonna slide that up there. Alright. So, presenting the weakest card in our kit. Yeah, this card is basically pointless. It's just an on-curve card. Then the mid mid range cards, right? So this is a two to five, two six, um, but it leaves you vulnerable to focus and sweep and such. It does draw a card that's nice. It has a boost that's pretty good for safety once you're in exceed mode. Starstruck, which is a card that's good at everything, uh, excels at nothing in particular, except for you know, not being at range. But like you can play this, and it is good. Like, unless your opponent initiates with a block at range 4, if your opponent initiates, you just play this, and it's like, yeah, it works. Either you miss me, or you come in and I hit you. Like, it's good at everything. Then we have this card, which is such an important part of her toolkit that it belongs in this intermediary space where it's exceptionally important, or exceptionally, like, strong. And also it has a boost, which is fabulous with normals, right? Like, that turns Dive and Spike into monsters. A uh, sweep, too, actually. On curve, 6 damage is a big deal. Um, so yeah, th this is this is big. Even though the attack itself, mm, not that far off of fair, honestly, just a bit over. And then beyond that, we get to a pretty fair ultra with a completely unfair boost, an absurdly unfair ultra, with a boost that just feels like it was put. What he? I don't. What? And uh. Hmm. Honestly, the more I look at this, the more it's like, well, I guess it returns it to your hand because if you wild swing it, you need to be able to play the power boost. Like, the only reason this recurs itself is so you can play that power boost, because you gotta play the power boost. That is the entire reason this card exists, I am now convinced. And why it has recursion. Uh, and the stuff that makes this and this, to a lesser extent this, certainly this, so extremely good. Oh, and also this boost. Is this. Her front side ability is interesting. Her exceed ability fabulously strong. My goodness. What is this? Alright. That's my review of Juno. Uh, at least when it comes to evaluating characters' power budgets, in my opinion. Um, yeah. It's it's a little bit more, more spread out than, uh, than Alice is. It's got at least one card that's just reasonable instead of you know, starting with an on-curve, or sorry, above-curve projectile that doubles as a mid-speed and close range. Like, this is probably about right in terms of lining things up. And this is another one of those important tools, at least on paper. This is a big, dumb range 2 ultra. Hmm, suspicious. Um... This is a button that says win the strike. Yeah, that checks out, except this one does a billion damage, so it's more like Guardian Slasher over here. And then, like, I don't know, Titan Peak is, like, down here somewhere. Like, Alice has a bunch of stuff that's unreasonably good that Juno doesn't, but Juno's best stuff is better than, like, almost any of Alice's stuff. At least that's how I would rate them. All right. Well, I hope this was interesting. Um... Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm going to call it a night here. Uh, if, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I do take notes of requests, although I do ask that you leave. So this is going to be on YouTube. Please leave, like, comments with character requests, because that's how I'm tracking them. Uh, it's just hard to remember otherwise, because I just go back through, and then when I do the video that the request is of, I go back and link it. This is my current plan. 
But yeah, for now, closing down the stream. Thank you for joining me. Uh, remember to drink water. It's good for you. And uh, stay hydrated, my friends. <laughs> Bye.